so the meetings never end. What the hell is that? It's raining outside. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> we don't want to be outside. It's raining. Oh my God. Get out of here. Yeah, Thanksgiving's right around the corner. <laughs> So when I come into the office, which is rare, I try to meet with Amanda and Jenna. Jenna always has a staff of these things, which are little like consultation things and things that we need to look at and price really quick before I go out there and meet with them. So what do you have here? Uh, this lady lives in Chicago. She wants a fountainscape to drown out the noise of Chicago and her budget's 4000 What do you think, Emily? We can do a lot of water features for four thousand dollars to drown out the sounds of the city in Chicago. The only thing I could probably think of is shooting a garden hose at a window. <laughs> right? If I just sat there like this, and I wouldn't do it, I'd probably have Chris do it. But if he sat there like this with a hose and shot it at her window, I don't think you'd hear the sounds of the hustle and bustle. <laughs> downtown in Chicago. So just so I can explain this to her, how long would you guys be on duty and how long would you be shooting it? It's a quick one day project oh, to do that. Oh. <laughs> Does she need a picture? <laughs> they can draw her one. But unfortunately for $4,000, it'd be hard to do a water feature that really drowns out the sound of the stuff that happens in the city or I'm picturing an expressway, I'm picturing the garbage trucks moving around. I'd love to do a small little pondless and the most you could do is take her mind off of it by refocusing her energy towards something nicer. So could we do something for 4,000? Yes. Uh, it'd probably be a sphere, maybe a small, small poundless waterfall, maybe basalt columns or something like that, but it'd be hard to really give her exactly what she's looking for. The garden hose would work though. <laughs> All right, I'm at one of my favorite places in the whole world, which is weird to say because it's just a stone yard, but it's the stone yard. Illinois Brick has been supplying us with stone for a very, very long time. Love working with them. One of the key parts to us staying efficient and keeping jobs on schedule is working with a vendor that supports that. Every single day they have our rocks for us before 10 o'clock in the morning because rocks showing up afternoon don't help us at all. When the truckload of stone shows up, we want to start setting that as fast as it comes off the truck. So they're very, very good about their deliveries. They also carry a huge inventory for us. So they're constantly bringing in stone. They almost always have 150 to 200 tons of stone on site. The reason I like coming here is because I can hand pick the pallets I want. And not that I know 100% what I'm doing with every single rock, but I have an idea of the size and the shape that I'm looking for for different size stuff. So right now I'm picking out um, the remaining stone for our large uh, pond in Downers Grove. And I'll just kind of show you some of the characters that I'm looking for. So I want size, right? And so I, you can see how I mark it. I just put a little orange dot there, but this is a great rock. I'm looking to create some more retaining walls. I like the length of this stone. I also look at what's gonna to be top and bottom. And on a stone like this, this would more likely be the top. This would probably be the face. And then this side over here might be the bottom. Once we get it out there, we might flip it and play around with it. But these two pallets really help me get high quick and they have the girth that I'm looking for for some of my retaining walls. I also need some blocky stuff. We've got some uh, another waterfall to build. So this blocky stuff here will really, really be nice. There's a pallet over there that I marked. We've got some big flat pieces, pieces like this. That he's picking up now i can lay as is or even stand that thing up like that and get some more height out of it without it looking weird they've just got a huge great selection i like some of these big flat pieces here and then i saw these way over here i like stuff like this like these big flat ones i'm kind of envisioning our stream to have more of this bedrock look and these thin flat ones instead of the bottom of the stream being gravel we might drop some of these in and so I've got that palette tagged and then I thought this palette was just nice and unique and we could find some fun things to do with these. Chris and I were talking about doing some kind of bench in the fire pit and these might work out perfect with a couple legs on there as benches. Can't wait to see these uh, rocks put into use. It's always fun to come out here and uh, tag some stones and I probably stop here at least twice a week and tag rocks for future jobs. All right, off to the project. Hi.
Well, hello again. Just got to the job site, uh, finished tagging those boulders. This is our Downers Grove project, and I'm super excited because I'm looking at that truck, and that is a tarp that goes over landscape material. So, so important that we leave an enormous amount of room for plants when we do these features. And when I see that here, I know the plants that came. I ordered a Weeping Red Bud, Blood Good, Japanese Maple, and a Dwarf Bald Cypress. And these all have specific places for them on our job site. And so I can't wait to see them in the waterfall area. So let's turn this around and see if they've got some of those plants put in. So there's that Weeping Red Bud, leaning hard to the right, but they'll fix that. Here's the Blood Good maple which will get considerably larger it'll be just awesome as this thing kind of comes up and hangs out over that but i'm really excited about the weeping red bud because look at how it instantly starts softening up all that rock so not only did we put a big plant pocket in between this boulder and those boulders in there we've got another one up there and let's see if we can zoom in and look at matt up there that's actually going to be planted partially in the water it's a dwarf bald cypress which uh maxes out at about eight to ten feet tall over a long period of time but it'll love life up there which will look really cool that one won't get much bigger it'll just kind of start hanging and weeping this one will come up into here and then we get even bigger stuff back over in the backdrop uh, we don't normally do the plants but in this application we're doing them because it's so important to get them in now because later it'll be nearly impossible for the landscapers to get that stuff in there. They also don't know where the liner's at. So we wanted to make sure we got that in there just right with the liner and everything. Super exciting. So super crazy day here at the office. Came in, we're getting ready for fall. Sale, that means just getting decor ready. We got the fish ready. We're getting plants ready. We're getting rid of some of our clearance items. I have a meeting uh, with these guys about Aquascape Academy. Aquascape Academy is an awesome event where we just teach, teach, teach. And so we're looking to revamp that entire academy. And these are the minds behind it. And for some reason, they include me. Now we can get started. Right? Yeah. <laughs> One eternity later. This meeting's taking way too long. When's it, gonna be, when's it being torn up? Get out of here. <laughs> what are they tearing up? They say, say are it again. You, are you guys... <laughs> Much, much, much later. 100% my favorite part of working at Aquascapes are meetings. <laughs> that was actually a super beneficial meeting. We're putting together this academy, like I said before, and the new academy online training is gonna be better than we've ever done anything in the past. So look for that this winter. I think they said a drop dead date of January 1st. And guess who's got the most work to do? This guy. We have to put in how to sell, how to bid, how to construct pond, pondlesses, fountainscapes, how to sell pond, pondlesses, fountainscapes, and everything in between, seaming liners, hooking up bulkhead fittings, biofall skimmers, so on and so on. So crazy, crazy busy. And I still haven't even started helping out with the retail store, which I'm walking through now. All right, so things are coming together. Nothing says fall sale like a couple pumpkins out on a rock island. <laughs> things are actually looking very festive. Front of the store is looking good. Just gotta clean up a little bit of stuff here and there. Come out here. Not too sure if we'll get rid of tropical plants, but who knows if they're priced right. Uh, they can actually add a lot of beauty to a party. So if you've got a fall party, these things will last well into October before that first frost comes. We got hyacinth and that kind of stuff that we'll just probably be giving away because Anybody that has a pond knows if you buy one of these, by the end of the year, you'll have about a thousand of them. Oh, it's a little weird, but I guess it says fall sale. <laughs> things are actually looking really good out here. We even brought in a couple more fish. Fish are looking super healthy. I would imagine we'll get rid of almost all of these by the end of the day on Sunday. And the idea is to get rid of all of them because we don't want to overwinter any of this stuff. Looks like we need some prices though on stuff. If they're not free, we need to put prices on everything that's out here. So we'll double check with Andrew. Let's see if Andrew's actually around. I can introduce you guys to Andrew. 20% discount nice hey Andrew do you like being on camera sure. <laughs> <laughs> so everything outside looks really good um, I'm just kind of going through and figuring out the fine details and stuff I think we still need price tags on some of the stuff out there what are we doing with the highest are we giving those our way are we gonna sell them oh, oh sell them <laughs> with authority so I think we just need price tags on that stuff we also need price tags on the succulents like I would walk through and put like this table of plants is 
five bucks a piece or whatever you've decided. Anything in here is two bucks or you know the hyacinth, I can't imagine I'd sell them for 50 cents a piece. Even the tropicals, we're not gonna overwinter those things, those big elephant ears. Right. We should price those things to get out of here, mm -hmm. right? Everything looks pretty good in here. The decorations look awesome. It's oh, look at this. Water. Best way to sell fall netting is show an example. They even went out and got the leaves. <laughs> That's great. And this is how we recommend netting your pond. If you put a stake on one side and put a stake on the other side and then a rope in between, it creates a tent. So when the leaves hit, they shed off to the side. If you try to just put a net across the pond like this, when all the leaves fall down, the weight of the leaves just pushes this down in the water, totally defeating the purpose of the net, making it really, really hard for you to get that off later. So create a tent anytime you do it. Another way to do it, just take a high spot. If you have a pergola or a tree, put a little eye hook up there and then run line down this way. And then you could still get in underneath to your skimmer box and 90% of the stuff hits the, hits the top and then sheds off to the side. We got some different product coming in. We got new colors on our little patio ponds. I love this thing. I think it's so great. We got all that stuff priced to get out of here. And then our fish experience room back here. Oh, look at that. They've even switched out the koi crunchies to a little pumpkin guy over here. See if they're hungry. And I would imagine the answer is yes. Oh my God. <laughs> well, just a few little odds and ends in getting this place together. And we should be rocking and rolling by tomorrow. So the doors open at 10. I will see you guys at 10 a.m. to help me greet everybody that's coming in for our fall sale. All right, safety first. Let's see what we got here. It looks like people are starting to walk in a little bit. Fall sale has begun. Andrews looks like he's making sure all details are taken care of. You got lots of people outside, people walking in. Let's hope we get rid of all of our inventory today. <laughs> Such a fun opportunity to meet with everybody. I like it most because I get to reconnect with our customers, get to catch up, see how their ponds are doing, maybe help potential new customers with some problems. In fact, I was talking with a guy outside. He doesn't have one of our systems and has been struggling green water all year. And I know the solution. So we get to, we get to help people like that. It's just gonna be a great day. I'll check in a little bit later and let you know how we're doing. So things are crazy, uh, extremely busy. You can see products um, kind of all over the place. We just keep restocking stuff everywhere. The store is getting quite busy as you can see behind me. So we've got constant people up at the register. What I like about this sale though, compared to maybe our water garden weekend sale in the spring, is it's not completely overwhelming. Normally our sale, there's people lined up all the way outside and back to here. This is a lot more chill. We get to focus a lot more on customer service, get a chance to talk with people a little bit more. But things are going great. So this is a family I met two years ago out uh, down south. And I actually remember the project very well. You guys had a walkout basement, right? And a raised deck. You guys said, it's not uh, if we're doing a pond, it's just a matter of when, right? And, and so I think they're in trouble now because these kids are having a blast feeding these fish. <laughs> these fish are super tame. It's awesome getting to see these guys again. Um, maybe we'll get out there to Yorkville sometime in the near future and uh, see if we can't get them a pond. That'd be fun. And then you guys can come here and get your own fish. Yeah.